Hey guys, thanks for coming back. Harrison, pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So today we're going to discuss, you know, building out a full funnel YouTube campaign and how that can deliver both profitability and scale. Absolutely. And Harrison's going to talk about the types of audiences and the types of formats that you should be using right now with your account. So Harrison, can you first speak about one of the newer formats that Google has? Yeah, it's called YouTube Shopping, and we're going to talk specifically about how that relates to a case study that we did, which was with Carbon38. So YouTube Shopping was really impactful for them because they have a hero product, the Takara Leggings, and they had a few good video contents to back it up. Great. And Talk a little bit about you know this specific case study. What did you do and what were the results that you saw? Yeah, so as it relates to full funnel campaigns, upper funnel, we used YouTube shopping as the format for all of these. Upper funnel, we targeted custom intent audiences. So we took people that were searching for, say, uh, Takara leggings on Google, people that were searching for high-waisted leggings. We took keywords from our non-branded campaign and built custom intent audiences. The second thing was custom affinity. So we went into different blogs and forums that we thought our users might be on, and we targeted that audience. So we built this upper funnel campaign, and we showed them a video ad of our Takara leggings. And that video was like a more branded video. It had models doing different activities in different environments. Next thing that we did was we did a middle funnel campaign where we targeted video viewers. So everybody that saw those videos in the upper funnel, we then showed them a second video customer testimonial. So it was like, OK, we've introduced the Takara leggings. Now let's show you what customers feel like with them on. And you know they're comfortable. And um, just, yeah, basically recommending the product to the, to the customer. So it was our mid-funnel campaign. And we saw direct ROAS out of both of those. And then we did a lower funnel campaign. So anybody that had been to the site, spent time on the site, added to the cart, didn't, no transactions, we then hit them with a third ad. Um, in the lower funnel campaign, same video, uh, customer testimonial, UGC content, and we did a YouTube shopping campaign. The interesting thing about the shopping format is you have a product carousel. So we actually had five or six product ads, just the Takara leggings and the different colors. So they could get a different idea of sizes and colors that they had the option to pick from. So you were really able to provide a different experience for each viewer when they were first introduced to the brand as they went down the funnel. Exactly. Yeah, great point. So it was a different experience, not only with the video content that they were seeing, but maybe the product that they were viewing in the carousel. So it sounds like a, sounds like a really successful campaign. Yeah. What were the results? Yeah, so it was almost a 4x ROAS blended from acquisition to remarketing, which is really strong for YouTube. Um, and that's just within our YouTube campaigns. It's not measuring brand lift or anything like that. Amazing. Yeah, it's really awesome. Harrison, can you walk me through tactically how you set up a campaign like this? Yeah, so you just have to make sure that those audiences are built out in separate campaigns. Um, and then you want, within the YouTube shopping campaign, you want to set a product filter for whatever your product is that you're showcasing in the campaign and maybe the different variations of it. Um, so you have your upper funnel campaigns, you have those correctly labeled, your mid funnel and your lower funnel. The, the key here is making sure that you're not only using YouTube to measure performance. So we had 4x ROAS just within YouTube, but we also weren't measuring view through conversions, which is a really powerful metric, mm -hmm. and then brand lift. So how many people were then going on Google and searching for Carbon38 afterwards? And it's trying to associate a value for that. Yeah, we've seen really tremendous results with this format in general, and I'm glad you, know, you guys in the accounts have seen similar success. Yeah, absolutely. And the last point I'll make on this, and this is really important, is that after you have this, you know, all of this traffic to your videos, you can take a video viewer's audience, you can place it on search and on shopping, and you can then see, okay, we had users that saw our YouTube video as an ad, and now they're searching for us on search, now they're searching for our products on shopping, and you can bid differently on them. So it's pretty, pretty impactful when you put all of those things together. Yeah, especially because each user is you know, value differently. Yeah. So when someone has visited your site and put something in that shopping cart yeah. before, being able to retarget them and having them come back is more valuable than someone who probably saw it for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's how we measured our campaigns and bid differently on, on those remarketing audiences. So you guys are actually able to bid differently based on where the person is in that funnel. Yeah, exactly. And we found that the video viewers audience, while well, it converted well, it didn't convert as well as your website visitors or your add to cart no transaction audiences, which makes sense. But it's good to just have those audiences layered in across your campaigns. And then your account managers are able to go take a look at which channels are working 
and put more dollars behind the ones that are actually converting. Exactly. It's easier to justify scale when you are seeing revenue and ROAS come back in, in these regards. So yeah, it's really, really impactful. So you mentioned kind of being able to go from YouTube to Google. Yes. Can you go the other way as well? Yeah, exactly. So with our upper funnel campaigns, we're building out custom intent audiences. So we're actually targeting people based on what they search for on Google and then showing them a YouTube ad. It's incredibly impactful. Um, and we found it to work really well. We call it top of funnel, but a lot of times we see these campaigns actually back out from a ROAS perspective. Yeah, it's really incredible stuff. You yeah. know, for the consumer being able to have those different experiences and walk them through um, kind of the different information that they receive, it, it's a great experience for all. Absolutely. And I think in conclusion, the, the two points I'll make here is, one, make sure that your audience targeting is succinct across upper funnel, mid funnel, and lower funnel. And then two, make sure you're, you're targeting via YouTube shopping, especially if you want the, the user to go directly to the product page and be uh, pre-qualified by the price. It's really impactful. And if you want to build a YouTube shopping campaign, you know what we just explained is exactly how you should do it. Harrison, this has been great. Thank you. Um, any final words for the audience? Yeah, so two final points. I would say if you're interested in making a YouTube shopping campaign and it still is a bit confusing, you can reach out to Mute6 and we'll offer a free consultation and a free account audit. Um, and the second thing is you absolutely should be yet leveraging YouTube no matter what. If you're selling something online, YouTube is a great resource for you to find new customers and retain users that have been to your website. Awesome. Harrison, thank you so much for coming again. Thanks for having me, man. All right, guys. We'll see you next episode.